thank you <coughs> so i'll try to finish it at, you know, within 5 to 7 minutes that's my ambition um, what i'm trying to do is that uh, how the uh, law responded especially the <coughs> uh, the indian state responded to uh, the uh, traditional knowledge especially to prevent uh, misappropriation and also at times to uh, provide uh, the so-called positive protection and even citing sometimes the need for uh, innovation in traditional knowledge areas. <laughs> Legal uh, instruments are now, you know, now uh, you know, using many countries, even at the uh, international level, uh, to um, uh, to address the uh, misappropriation of TK or uh, to provide uh, positive protection uh, for uh, traditional knowledge. Often, innovation also is cited as a reason for using uh, legal instruments. But law has an inherent problem in addressing uh, traditional knowledge, especially to bring traditional knowledge within its uh, legal framework. First important problem is that any lawyer uh, will face is that how to define a TK. Without definition, you cannot uh, move forward. So uh, this is one of the <coughs> biggest uh, challenge uh, lawyers or the lawmakers face all, all the time. If you look at the uh, WIPO's uh, traditional knowledge uh, draft, uh, framework, which is currently under negotiation, you may find around five or six uh, definitions uh, for traditional knowledge, and they are to agree on any of these things. So, but apart from that, most important uh, challenge uh, law face is that in, in the jurisprudence, uh, the rights are to be given to a legal per, uh, to a person. The person is defined as natural person or a legal person, but the traditional knowledge, which is spread in the community. Uh, how do you bring the community uh, within the legal framework? So you need to have some kind of a legal personality. And often community, uh, you know, you can, you can see that, you can feel that, but you cannot define it, uh, community uh, in, in a legal framework because you have to extend something and legal personality to a community. This can be done only through a trust or through a society or through some corporatization. <clears throat> something needs to be, uh, be done. So this is the major uh, uh, challenge. Uh, you know, to bring um, traditional knowledge within the legal framework. <laughs> Having said this, the Indian state responded mainly to traditional knowledge, especially uh, in the post uh, 90s, uh, to, to address this issue of uh, misappropriation uh, initially, and then uh, the idea of providing some kind of positive protection. <laughs> but it's mainly in the intellectual property framework. But having said this, law also. Uh, facilitated this misappropriation in the pre-90s period, and even stifled, uh, you know, innovation of traditional knowledge. Uh, one example I cited was yesterday the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, which treat the tradition, uh, the you know, any medicine which is any invention you are uh, trying to do it within the uh, Indian system of medicine is treated at par with the allopathic medicine. So, and the Schedule Y of the Indian Cosmetics Act. So this kind of equal treatment with the modern knowledge uh, when it comes to the innovations can stifle uh, innovation of traditional knowledge. So there are many other examples also. But that apart, the law uh, facilitated misappropriation internationally, especially allowing the, tran uh, the translation of uh, knowledge from the informal settings to the formal settings and obtainment of uh, patent monopoly over those things. And of course, a uh, lot have, uh, have been said about it and documented about it. So a phenomenon of biopiracy. <coughs> so this was one of the initial concerns where uh, uh, the lawmakers uh, faced in 90s, how to prevent this misappropriation. And then, oh, how about uh, providing um, positive protection? And uh, so Indian, uh, Indian state responded with uh, may, uh, not primarily addressing this TK question, but while addressing the uh, uh, complaints with the uh, agreement on trade related, related aspects of intellectual property rights, the TRIPS agreement. So government of India uh, legislated around seven legislations. So through these legislations, they tried to address this issue. <coughs> uh, so one of the important uh, piece of legislation is the uh, Patent Act. And Patent Act, uh, as you know, if you we strictly speaking, uh, you cannot give a patent to any traditional knowledge or traditional knowledge, what they call it now, traditional knowledge-based inventions. Because one of the important, uh, there are three criteria to grant a patent. Novelty, that's uh, it should be new. Uh, industrial application, as well as uh, inventive step. But if it's a traditional knowledge, it's not new. So you cannot uh, really uh, give a patent. But 
At the same time, all of us know that these criteria has been uh, diluted, the threshold level has been diluted over a period of time and patents have been granted on many of these innovations. <coughs> Uh, many many patents on traditional knowledge uh, uh, knowledge as such, and one most cited case also uh, like uh, we we confronted with this issue of turmeric patent and confronted the uh, issue of uh, lack of evidence and that related to then TKDL etc. So I am not <coughs> getting into that, but that there are two uh, sections of the Patent Act uh, clearly responded to uh, this issue. One is Section 3P of India's Patent Act, which says that uh, traditional knowledge whatever. Uh, is there in effect a traditional knowledge cannot be patented or cannot should uh, cannot be recognized as an invention therefore cannot be given a cannot be uh, granted a, a patent <coughs> then section 10 which recognizes that any oral knowledge can be treated as a prior art therefore it can be an oral knowledge which is not documented can be used while examining the patent and a patent can be uh, judge based on an oral knowledge. So this was a uh, uh, you know kind of an innovation, uh, a legal innovation, uh, which we learned it the hard way through the turmeric patents, and we brought it uh, a legal innovation saying that recognizing oral knowledge. So this in a way is a recognizing the uh, traditional knowledge indirectly, uh, and at the same time, we also uh, have the TKDL too. Uh, to say that there are a set of documentation to provide evidence to show that this knowledge exists and therefore novelty is destroyed and therefore patent cannot be granted. But there is a major limitation to this approach. The important approach is that um, any of these, uh, you know, the patent office, it's through its practice or the law, does not recognize the lead knowledge as a, as a uh, piracy. For instance, the example which Darshan mentioned, there was a particular plan which is using for uh, treatment of jaundice. When they cited that, okay, it's particularly targeting hepatitis C or D or E, whatever it's, uh, then if that's a lead knowledge which they made as a product and apply for a patent, uh, so traditional knowledge can be used as a, a lead knowledge for, uh, for, for ample number of uh, solutions. So this will cut down the what you call bioprospecting period and they can, uh, uh, they can, you know, uh, focus a particular plant or a particular, uh, uh, a particular uh, sort of knowledge to, to, to uh, kickstart the uh, uh, research. So this lead knowledge has not been recognized as a part of a piracy, apart from the, you know, within the legal framework. So this is a major limitation. Therefore, even the traditional knowledge digital library also has a limitation because this knowledge can take can be taken if because it is existing without a legal framework can be taken and used for a kickstarting certain uh, in, in, you know research and then that outcome of that research can be patented so this will not be uh, tackled through uh, tackled through uh, you know uh, the TKDL so then comes the uh, another important piece of legislation is that um, of uh, Geographical indication. This mainly recognizes a kind of a the, the problem of you know uh, absence of positive protection. So GI has been promoted to as a kind of a panacea for uh, extending uh, positive protection for traditional knowledge, <laughs> especially for uh, you know artisans and uh, uh, other set, uh, you know even agriculture products. The rationale is that uh, you create a consumer consciousness consciousness among the goodwill. Uh, uh, regarding the goodwill of that particular product and charge a premium price. So uh, this is the rational uh, of, a, uh, uh, of geographical indications. But this also has a major limitation. The f important limitation is that organizing this community and translating into a legal, you know, extending a legal personality to that community. This is spread around. And how do you uh, organize this informal community into a formal uh, uh, legal personality? This is the major challenge. But that part, I think the important uh, problem is that uh, of this strategy is that you have to invest a lot of resources for brand building. Registration of a geographical indication is a primary step. <coughs> then you have to create this brand consciousness. Then only the consumer is, uh, you know, uh, able to pay high, high premium price on it. Otherwise, in a country like in India, you know, people have, uh, uh, majority of the people are, uh, uh, are uh, you know, below $2 per day. So they may not pay the high premium price. Uh, 
so then you can always argue that it's for export market but uh, if you look at our gis it's mainly existing in, uh, in the crafts and uh, other areas rather than when in agriculture products and if also uh, its export potential also limited so you have to create that market and who is going to invest it and currently the much of these gis are owned by government uh, because uh, no one else is there the community has not been organized properly so the government uh, put a lot of money through handicraft commissions and various other apida etc etc so they own this uh, gis but they like to invest money now to create such a um, Thing. Another piece of uh, uh, legislation is, uh, which recognizes indirectly uh, TKs of uh, Plant Variety and Farmers' Rights Act, which recognizes the registration of farmers' variety. But the important criticism is that this is in a way to in they included uh, farmers uh, uh, farmers' variety as part of the uh, plant variety protection is in a way excluding farmers because it's uh, in a way dilute the resistance part of uh, diluting the resistance against uh, plant variety because the important uh, beneficiary is going to be the corporates and you give a small room uh, for farmers rights and in order to have a farmers right you will have to have a to recognize a farmers variety as a plant variety you will have to have a lower threshold you cannot ha apply the same threshold level to recognize a farmers variety uh, you know you, uh, at par with the uh, normal uh, breeders variety because it involves a lot of money and a lot of resources so uh, this in a way is in a way diluting the resistance against this uh, you know plant variety protection and then forest rights act also recognize intellectual property of uh, forest dwellers then of course we have national biodiversity act which um, in a way creating a two sets of uh, tk in this country one is uh, tk in general uh, and sen uh, another is that tk associated with the genetic resources and uh, npa has a uh, uh, has a role uh, to play in those TK which is uh, w uh, fall within the national biodiversity, uh, uh, all the uh, TK associated with genetic resources. And uh, you are supposed to take a permission from um, National Biodiversity Authority if you indulge in any transfer of uh, genetic resources and associated knowledge. So uh, there is a kind of a uh, watch, uh, watch is there. And you, I was looking at some of these, uh, uh, those approvals most of these beneficiaries are CSAR, including for uh, patents. So I'll come to that uh, later. Now, uh, there is also an initiative by government of Kerala to try to put a, an open source uh, format, uh, you know, considering the whole uh, TK as part of a, a knowledge uh, commons. And even if you take the knowledge and you are supposed to put it back to the bank and uh, then allow others to operate it. But uh, all these models are basically uh, uh, basically leading uh, to the fact that what we are following, uh, you know, what we are trying to do is that an exclusivity model for uh, innovation in TK. And this model, I think, uh, uh, is we are replicating the uh, main IPR models. And uh, this is not going to, uh, going to, going to, you know, give any kind of clear benefits because the, even in the main, <laughs> Uh, mainstream media, there are many other alternative models have come up for innovations. Instead of looking at that, we are trying to, uh, 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 trying to uh, follow the main I IPR model, uh, you know, uh, one, sh uh, one should be skeptical. Why I'm saying this is that now the government of India is also, uh, uh, I think, uh, two or three drafts, drafts are available from various sources to have a, a protection for traditional knowledge. So what kind of protection? It's again, the model is mainly IPR. It gives set of rights uh, to prevent others from doing it. Um, so, but at the same time, I am I'm aware of it. You know, we like to prevent misappropriation. And at the same time, we should not, uh, uh, we should not um, uh, follow the IPR model uh, of uh, giving positive protection. So we should be a bit careful about it. And there should be much more debate uh, should happen on this question because that tough lessons we learned from IPR uh, is in front of us. So uh, what, uh, what are we going to gain on following a model which, uh, uh, which follows the IPR model? Because it's also, in a way, puncture our resistance against uh, uh, the IP, uh, IP models. And there is much to lose there. So having said this, 
uh, uh, let me just uh, look at the uh, um, uh, the uh, government's uh, initiatives on uh, innovation in TK, which is mainly institutionalized through the NAF model. But much of the TK innovations have happened through non-governmental organizations and uh, other uh, initiatives. But governments, uh, the central government's initiative is mainly invested through NAF, and NAF is looking beyond, uh, say, TK. TK is part of it, I, uh, but it's a grassroots level innovation NAF focus. And NAF model is basically they look at uh, scouting documentation, validation and R&D, then IP management, then incubation and uh, development, uh, business development. But I think uh, TK cannot be domesticated in this framework uh, because, uh, because the reason that, uh, you know, this approach basically undermines, uh, you know, it's integration is in nature. You know, you integrate into the your TK into the mainstream and to do the business and to scale it up. So this model will not work, especially in the socio-economic context of TK where it uh, stands. And one of the important examples is that uh, the Kani we, lessons we learned from the uh, the uh, the Kani model, where uh, it was a good product, it went, but they realized the problem was that availability of raw material because this raw material is not available 365 days. So therefore, uh, the licensing mechanisms and a, uh, and a you know, uh, global license never work because there is our supply is limited and uh, also, uh, also it's available on a particular time and particular area and particular time. So uh, you cannot work on a global uh, scale. Uh, yeah, and lastly, uh, I think uh, one of the CSIR also follow this model. If you, you know, I was on a, another study, we were looking at some of these uh, patents taken by CSIR. Uh, it's there all over the place on uh, based on TKs. So I think uh, there is a need to rethink, uh, rethink this. And lastly, I would say that the law, the law, the role of law is to is, is to prevent misappropriation and then to facilitate a policy to work. And there are certain laws which may, uh, which may prevent, like the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, may prevent an innovate, uh, innovation policy on traditional medicine. So you'll have to remove those barriers and leave it to the policy. And policy is to be used for uh, promotion of innovation of TK rather than the uh, legal instruments. Thank you.